In the previous lecture, we have studied about the while statement in C++ and in this lecture, we are going to study about the for statement in C++. So, let us see what is this for statement, how important it is and what is it used for in C++. So, coming to the for statement, a for statement repeatedly executes a section of code so long as a given condition is true. So, we see that this is somehow similar to the while statement. This for statement also repeatedly executes a section of code until when? Until a given condition is true. So, here also we see that there is a condition and as long as that condition is true, the section of code within the for loop will be executed. So, let us see the flow of control of this for statement. So, here we see that we entered the for loop. So, again we call it a loop because it is going to be executed again and again. So, here in the for loop, we have something known as the initialization. So, this was something that was missing in the while loop. So, in for loop, we are going to initialize a variable and then we are going to have the test condition. Now, if the test condition is true, then the statements within the for statement will be executed and then there will be an update counter here. So, within the for statement itself, we are going to update the counter that is usually the variable that was initialized here. So, the same variable will be updated. That means it will be either incremented or decremented and then the condition will be checked again. And if it is true, it will be executed again and again the counter will be updated and the condition will be checked again and if it is true, it will be executed. And then after updating the counter, if the test condition is false, then we exit or we come out of the for loop. So, that is the flow of control in the for loop. So, here we see three important things. One is the initialization part. So, here the variable or the counter is going to be initialized. Then we have the test condition where the condition will be checked. Then we have the update counter part where the counter will be updated and then the condition will be checked again. So, these are the three important things. The initialization, the test condition and the update counter part which are the important things in a for loop. Okay. Now, let's take an example to see the syntax and its working. So, here in this first example, we are taking a program and here we have our header and then we have the main function and inside the main function, we are writing the for statement. So, this is the syntax for writing a for statement. So, we write for and within brackets or parentheses, we have to write these three important things. First is the initialization. So, I am initializing and declaring a variable called i. i is equal to 1. So, the initialization is actually this part i is equal to 1. But I am also declaring it inside the for loop itself. So, this is also something that is possible in C++. You can declare and initialize the variable inside the for loop itself. So, we declare a variable i of the type integer whose initial value is set to 1. So, that is the initialization. Then we have this part which is the condition. So, I am checking the test condition and my condition is that i should be less than or equal to 10. So, that is the condition. And here we have an update counterpart where I am updating the value of this variable i by 1. So, i++ plus plus means increment the value by 1. And this is the statement inside the for loop. So, it will be enclosed within parenthesis. So, what it does is it is just printing out hello there and then a new line. And then outside the for loop, we are returning 0. So, remember the important things that we studied here. We have the initialization part, then we have the condition and then we have the counter updation. So, these are the three things that you have to write in order inside a for statement. Initialization, the condition and the counter updation. And then this is the statement inside the for loop. Okay, so let us run this program in Visual Studio Code and see what is the output. Okay, so I have that same program that we saw. It is written in our Visual Studio Code now and I have saved the file with the name 4.cpp. Okay, so let us compile this program. So, we type g++ 4.cpp and then we see that there are no errors and the program got compiled successfully and the name of our output file is a.exe. So, let us run that. So, dot slash a.exe, we press enter and we see that hello there is printed 10 times. So, we see that this for loop is working correctly. So, initially the value of i was equal to 1 and then it checked if 1 is less than or equal to 10, it is true. So, it printed hello there and then it comes here and it increments the value of i by 1. So, i now becomes 2. Again, this condition is checked and then it finds that the new value of i which is 2 is also less than or equal to 10. So, it is true. So, it prints the statement and this thing continues again and again till the value of i becomes 11. So, when it becomes 11, it sees that 11 is not less than or equal to 10. The condition is is false. So, it will not execute this. It will break from the for loop and come out of the program. 
So remember the order of execution in a for loop. So the first thing that will be done is the initialization and after that the condition will be checked. Then the statements will be executed and then the counter will be updated. And after that this initialization will not be done again. So initialization is done only for one time. So after the statements are executed the counter will be updated then condition will be checked and then if it is true statements are executed again then counter is updated and then so on. So it goes on like that. That is the flow of control that we have in a for statement. So we saw that the output of this program is it prints hello there 10 times. Ok so now let's take another example. So in this example we want to print the sum of all the values from 1 to 10. That means 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 10. And then we are going to use for loop here. So if you have watched the previous lecture we did this using the while loop. So let's see how to do it using the for loop now. So here we are declaring and initializing one variable that is sum which is of type integer and it is equal to 0. Now inside the for loop we are initializing a variable called i which is equal to 1 and then we are checking the condition saying if i is less than or equal to 10 and then we have a counter saying i++. Then we have the statement inside the for loop which is sum plus equal to i. So this is the same like writing sum equal to sum plus i. So I want you to know the different ways of writing that we have. That is why I am using this kind of notation over here. So remember that you can also write sum equal to sum plus i. Now what will happen in this for loop? Initially the value of i is 1. So i is equal to 1. Now it will check the condition. Is 1 less than or equal to 10? Yes it is true. So sum equal to sum plus i. So what is the initial value of sum? 0. 0 plus value of i? 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1. Ok so sum is equal to 1 now. Now i is incremented by 1. So i was 1. Now i becomes 2 because of this. And again condition is checked. Is 2 less than or equal to 10? Yes it is true. So sum equal to sum plus i. So what was the value of sum in the previous iteration? It was equal to 1. So sum equal to sum plus i means 1 plus what is the value of i now? It is equal to 2. So 1 plus 2 equal to 3. So sum becomes 3. And then i is incremented again and again the condition is checked and if it is true it will be executed. So this is going to be continued till this condition is true. So there will be a point when i will be equal to 11. So at that time what will happen? This condition will become false. And at that time it will break and come out of this loop and it will print sum of 1 to 10 is equal to sum. What is the latest value of sum that will be printed? And then we print a new line. Ok so let's go and run this program in Visual Studio Code and see what will be the output. Ok so we come to Visual Studio Code and I have written that same program that we saw. And here I have saved the file name with the name 42.cpp. So let us compile this program. So we type g++42.cpp, 42 cpp press enter and then we see program is compiled successfully without any errors and the output file name is a.exe and let's run that. So we run it and then we see sum of 1 to 10 is equal to 55. Sum of 1 to 10 is equal to the sum which was calculated here using the for loop which is equal to 55. So we see that it is working correctly. So we see that the output of this program is sum of 1 to 10 is equal to 55. Ok, now let's take another example where we will get the input from the user. We will ask the user up to which number he wants to print the sum. So here we printed it only up to 10. So we will ask the user till which number he wants to print and up to that number we will print the sum starting from 1 till the number the user enters. So let's try to do that using for loop. So here in this third example we will try to do that. So we have our program here and we have the sum initialized to 0 and we are declaring another variable called val which is also of the type integer and this is used for getting the input from the user. So whatever number the user enters we will store it in this variable called val. So here we are writing a cout statement saying enter the number till which the sum has to be calculated. And then we are accepting that value that the user enters using the cin statement and we are putting it in the variable called val val. So val contains the number that the user has entered. Now we are running a for loop here. So we see we are initializing i is equal to 1. Then we are putting a condition here saying as long as i is less than or equal to val. Now what is val? The value that the user has entered. So in the previous example we gave the value is equal to 10 here. It was a hard coded value. But here we are giving a value that the user enters. And then we are giving the counter updation here i++. Now inside the for loop we are writing a statement sum plus equal to i which means sum equal to sum plus i. So what it essentially is going to do is that this loop is going to run as long as i is less than or equal to the value that the user enters and then this statement will be executed and the counter will be updated again and again till this condition becomes false. 
then it will break out from the loop and it will print out the sum of 1 to val. What is val? The value that the user has entered is equal to sum. That is the latest value of sum that is calculated inside this for loop. And then we print an end line. Okay, so let us try to run this program and see if it is working. Okay, so I have that same program written here in our Visual Studio code. So let us try to run this program. I have saved the file name with the name 43.cpp. So let us compile this program. So G++ 43.cpp, we enter and we see that the program is compiled successfully without any errors and the output file name is a.exe. So let us run the output file. So if we run that output file, it is asking enter the number till which the sum has to be calculated. So let us enter 10 and see. So we see it says the sum of 1 to 10 is equal to 55. So val is equal to 10 here. So the loop runs till 10 and then it prints the sum of 1 to 10. Okay, let's run it once more and enter another value. So here this time let me enter 100. So here it says the sum of 1 to 100 is equal to 5050. So we see that this loop is working correctly. So it starts from 1, goes till the value that the user has entered and it is printing the sum of the numbers from 1 till that value. Alright, so that is how the for statement works. So remember the order in which it executes, the initialization part, then the condition and then the execution of the statements and then the increment. So after that, in the second iteration, again we check the condition, then statements are executed and then the increment. So it goes on again and again till the condition becomes false. So that is how the for loop works. So we see that that is the use of the for loop as well. It is used for performing some operation or running a piece of code again and again. So that is why we call it a loop. So I hope this lecture about for statement and how to run for loops are clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.